There's a complaint that you do know grand journalists are listening here anytime they come to interview you. Why would I grand journalists listening here? Why you people have taken me to be uh, an entity in this country? Look, I am sick and tired of what you people do to me. Journalists, let me tell you, if you don't know, go back to history and, uh, and history will tell you who, who fought for your freedom of media in this country. The freedom of speech, freedom of media in this country, I fought it in the National Assembly. It almost cost my life. Chai. To stand for the journalists. But today, journalists are making caricature of me every day on media. I don't know if you people lack content. You use me for your content. Eh? You people lack content all the time. You want to use me and be doing rubbish on social media. You accuse me of many things. And you and I know that I am a true Nigerian who, who, has, who is patriotic to make sure that this country succeeds. But you people have taken me for granted. This today you accuse me of this. You say I am blue bala, I am baba blue or whatever. Look, I am sick and tired of this. I will never grant any journalist uh, listening uh, in this country. Honorable, why would you say such a <laughs> well, that was really interesting. Uh, welcome back. If you're just joining us, so this is a Daybreak Extra on Trust TV. Uh, coming to you live from our studio in the city of Abuja. Uh, so before um, we go on with the show, we'll be talking about the rise of skit-making genre in Nigeria. And just like you saw, joining us today is uh, the Stanley B. Nilius, a.k.a. Gospel Alhaji. 
a comic actor, skate maker, and also a politician. <laughs> Welcome uh, to Daybreak Extras, um, Gospel Elijah, because I can say that you prefer to go by that. Mm. So uh, let's start with the clip we just finished watching. I think the first one, there was comedy. We laughed. There was a message in it. And the message came right on time at this time of election. Mm. Why? Just tell us your thoughts. What were you thinking? What inspired you to do that? Yeah, thank you very much. You know, as a comedian, you are given a gift to which every talent that has been given to you, you have to use it to contribute because it's also an act of worship irrespective of what we do. Uh, it is my duty as a citizen of the country to sensitize Nigerians based on what condition we are facing now because in my, sh in my capacity as a honorable, I know I have to act in a honorable way. <laughs> so some of some people who are in politics today, who they have failed to deliver in their, uh, they failed to deliver what they promised to people. So the only way or the only means they can go back to their position is by creating some problems that will give them, that will give them a sympathy vote. You know, by the time you are being sabotaged. Yeah, by disrupting a rally or doing other stuff, then the opener will now take you as a serious one, Me, which means you have failed in your capacity as a honorable. You've had a lot of our campaign promises, which you have not delivered. Then you have to instigate some crisis, or you go and lie, you hide the canopy of religion or your tribe, or, you know. Which is horrible. Yes. Mm, because your message was, if people tend to send the thugs, uh, you know, uh, younger yes. people to go and do bad things, but they would not want their own children, their own children to, to be involved. Mm. You have never seen where uh, a honorable member or governor or a sitting president, his children are in the street campaigning. The only way you see them, it is when they're in their father's room or parlor where the supporters are there to solicit for or support the parent. You now see them there. They will show them. Or, or in the division of power. That's why you see the children of those elite who are in power, mm. you see them. But when it comes to where the foot soldiers come out, where the youth are being used as drugs, you know, you won't find the children there. They are outside the country or they are somewhere chilling. So I, I'm trying to inform other politicians that are, if truly again. you want some children to go out and go and fight, or converse for vote for you, that make use of your children because the ch charity begins at home. <laughs> if you want other people's children to be political talks, let the, your children be part of, let maybe your son to be the team leader. Okay. Yes. Mm. Right. Uh, when it comes to comedy or skit making, you actually have uh, different people yes. who uh, center their work around a particular thing. Mm. You know, is your centered about uh, around politics, or do you branch out to other? Uh, you know, kind of, you know, yeah. Kind of, yeah. I'm not centered on politics alone, but I choose uh, an identity, which happens to be a honorable. I'm a comic act. I, I act other roles okay. because when it comes to full movies, I I go for other roles. I play, but I have chosen an identity, mm. honorably. So it's not everything you see me doing because I have to portray the character I'm representing. Mm. So you don't find me doing all those. Uh, ones that you see boys on the street going naked or whatever. You don't find me there because uh, honorably you have to see me <laughs> behaving <laughs> as a lawmaker. So I have to portray <laughs> the lawmaking uh, aspect of it. But I am the person who, if you are giving me a role that I know that role will pass a message, irrespective of the role, I will do it. But the one that will not go against my culture, neither will temper with other people's culture or people's religion. I have to respect everybody's opinion. So I'm not only centered on honorable or politics alone. I do other stuff. I have movies mm -hmm. that I've been shown on other TV stations like yours. Though uh, 
I don't know if those movie producers have sold the right copyright to you, people you have started showing, but other TV stations, your sister stations are showing them. So I acted different role, different from politics. Mm. At times I go for get man, at times I play bad boy. You know, there are other roles mm. I play. But, but I know on story lies with um, Al Haji, you know, politician. Yes. yes. Um, okay. there, is, there is this thing you normally do. How do you introduce yourself in your videos? Uh, uh, initially, I told you are going to tell me, may we meet you, that's where I will introduce you. But if, since you have given me the opportunity, I will do that. Uh, in case you are tuning your television, my name is Honorable Intifichi Nilius Ngala Abwehyambu, member representing the good people of Mwatanka Abwehyambu, Karamajiji, Kuchigoro, Kwanshisha, Bandika, Ariaria, Iana, Okwaja, Otuwaike, Okilka. Boni Tinkan Island Federal Constituency. <laughs> I'm the Chairman Committee on Mineral Resources in the National Assembly. So that is who I am. Okay, full fledged Nigeria. Yes. <laughs> All right, so uh, Gospel Al Haj. Yes. What's with the name? You said? What's with the name Gospel Al Haj? How did it come about and what's the idea behind the name? Initially, when I started my career, that was not the name I named myself. I came from a military background. My great, my parents, my uncles, my brothers, some of them are in, in Navy, Air Force, all the military. In fact, all the security structure of this country, both police, paramilitary and military. Mm -hmm. So I admire my grandfather so much. There was a time he told us the story about regiment soldiers, regimental soldiers. So because I come from that background and I start calling myself regiment soldier. Anywhere I go for, for my stage play, I answer regiment soldier. It was when I came to Abuja, a friend of mine invited me for a program. While I was walking into the program, because it's a gathering of Christians, so the one in charge of the program, the pastor, when he saw me coming, he said, ah, we can see an allergy in our mix. That makes him a gospel allergy. That was how the name came. I was taken there by a, friend, a colleague of mine, Stanley's Precious. He took me there in Guarimpa. So I look at it, and I saw myself portraying al Haji's kind of thing. And at times, I'm being involved in the gospel or the stuff. And I say, OK, I think that would be wise if I should answer gospel al Haji. And since I started answering that name, I've moved from, stage, from one stage to another, from one stage to another. Mm -hmm. It means. It's God making for me to answer the name Gospel Al Haji, but originally I was answering Regiment Soldier or Al Haji Fishi. Hmm. That was what I was answering. So, what has been ch the challenges that you have been facing as a skit maker in the north, the northern part of Nigeria? In the northern part of Nigeria, we have a lot of challenges. The one I face, and I, the one I know some of my colleagues are facing. Uh, Initially, normally, a northern Nigerian, any, whatever he does, you, you laugh at him because there are people that are very jovial, friendly. So our activities, when somebody comes from other part of the country, seems we are jokers. But because of our activities, the way we do our business, the way we do our things, you, you take us as jokers. So it's part of us. But the challenges we are facing now is that uh, we have investors from the north who don't believe in our craft. Today, people who are making, shaking the industry, you find out mostly comes from the other part of the country because they have investors who believe in them, believes in the craft they have, they support them. But we here in the north, it takes the grace of God to stand and get to where you are or where I am today. We have had challenges, you know, at times facilities to use pass the message, it's difficult to find it here in our part of the country. But uh, at times, we try our best to make sure that we push. But if we are given level ground the way others were given, I swear to God, what you are going to see is going to be different. But uh, we find it difficult to do it. But we pray with the way we are moving, we are pushing, irrespective of the support or not, we are still pushing. I believe one day we will change and uh, it will be. Okay. So, uh, you know, talking about 
skit making would you say skit making has overshadowed stand-up com uh, comedy because you have a lot of you know people who used to do stand-up com uh, comedy hmm. you know right now if they, they, they've actually ventured into skit making hmm. a lot of people have actually made more money from skit making than you know stand-up comedy hmm. what's your thought yeah the skit making why people go for skit making is because uh, it's not all the time we have comedy show. But you can always make your videos and it will be online all the time. So uh, stand-up comedy comes once a while. It's not everybody, every day we go for, but we gather then, people. There used to be a lot of stand-up comedy shows, you know, but since yes. skit making actually, you know, started, it has reduced. The number of shows has dwindled. There used to be a lot back you know, then, in different states. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> for you to organize a show that you bring stand-up comedians to come around, it costs millions. But to shoot a skit today, if you have an idea, there are people that will rub mine with you that will come and shoot for you, edit for you. All they're after is to get credit. So it's not everybody that you go and meet him and say, OK, I want to do a stand-up comedy. Go and pay for a hole for me then I will just give you credit. It won't work. So it has a lot of investment. So investing in show and uh, investing in the shooting skit, they are quite different ways. So that's why you see now, and uh, you know, it's not, you know, people in the village, it's not everybody that have chance to come and uh, pay for a ticket hmm. to watch. But today, videos are around all over the world. Go to villages, you see some people manage to get their small uh, smartphone and uh, they watch your videos. So, and uh, people who are in video making are more, you know, they have more attention than that of standard comedy. So that's why you see some of them are running to, con to do both. Mm -hmm. Standing and also the visual aspect of it. Okay, so you talked about, you know, um stand-up comedy me being more demanding than skit making how do you make money from skit making because I know you spend so much money you know from location to mm -hmm. what you wear and from to other people who yes. that's cast right <laughs> to the cast as well so how do you make money after posting these videos online yes that is one to thank God for asking me this question because I uh, some people thought or think once they enter or they start making video, they'll start making money. That's not how it is. You have to grow a channel that the channel is paying before you start making money. <clears throat> and uh, how to make money as a skit maker? Sometimes some people give you advert, you shoot. They pay you for that advertisement. Then while others, their channel is due for payment. They'll be paying you in dollar. So uh, people should not think uh, when you venture into skit making, you just start making money and buy a house. No, you have to grow to a certain level before you start being paid. You don't just start with 1,000 subscribers without you having watch 4,000 watch hours. You think you start making money. If I should tell you how long I've been in the industry till date, please tell then, us. Yeah? Please tell us. No, it's been long. It's been long because I started far back 2008. No. Hmm. But the monetary aspect of it, I get to discover it around 2015, no, 2017. Hmm. So some people want to start within six months and start getting paid. It will not work like that. Except you go and buy a channel that is already monetized. I'm, I'm sorry, before you ask your question, you talked mm. about, you know, it took you so long for... But is it because of your location? Is it because you're in the north? Because in the south, mm. people just, you know, spring up. And in two months, they've already started making money. I, you know, I've heard some people say, you know, if you go to Lagos, you mm. know, you have a lot of people who actually support your craft more than, yes. you know, other states. Yes. Could that be the reason? Is it because you're in Ariwa? Yes. When I started my career, I was under somebody. So we built his channel to 
before other people, the big names, you know, in the industry, before they started getting uh, recognition from YouTube, giving them silver recognition, right. we had that. But it wasn't my station, it wasn't my channel. It was my boss channel. So he was earning money. We were this there before we found ourselves somewhere. Then I want to call it this thing that people from the other side within two months, they invest a lot. Some of them, they will just come into the industry and buy channel, monetize channel, and they have money. By the time they create a content, they will sponsor it. And that will give them money. Once you have talent and you have money to support the talent, definitely you will see the impacts immediately. But if you are the type you have the talent, you don't have money to support the craft, you will stay for long with your talent and your craft. You are still struggling before you get there. So the difference between them and the northerners in this industry is because they have people that will come them single-handedly and say, okay, I'm going to give you some money to support your craft. Before you know, they buy a good channel that has a, that once you drop something, it produces money. So that's the difference between we and them. Would you, would you put um, emphasis or importance on consistency to also you know, help you get yeah. recognized? Consistency is good, but if you're consistent and uh, your channel is not monetized, it's the same thing with people that have the talent that they don't have money to support the craft. So that is just mm. what so, is going so on. So in time, in the long run, do you think skit making will eventually take over from, you know, uh, stand-up comedy? Because you see a lot of, in fact, if not all stand-up comedians doing skits, yes. even the big ones, even the top guns. There's room for every bird to fly. <laughs> the sky is too wide. <laughs> that is just the truth. No industry will overshadow any other industry. You only run and still continue at the pipe. You know, you, how do I call me? English. How do I call, how do I call me? English. So every industry will stand. No industry will go pipe low. Because every industry has its own blessings. The actors were there. We have, we know of uh, people like Mr. Ibo and the rest. They are still doing their stuff. The new skid, the new generation of skid makers are all. Everybody is doing this one. So is the the sky is very wide for every fly, for every bird fly, whatever to fly. So I don't think any other industry will retire others. No, there are enough people who want to watch videos. There are enough people that are ready to pay hundred million, uh, sorry, ten million. Five million for a table to go and watch stand up comedy. So everybody is taking what belongs to him. Nobody is taking what does not belong to him. Mm. I've said that person is a criminal. Mm. And in this aspect, there's no criminality <laughs> like that. So, what would your advice be for young people out there who want to, who aspire to be, you know, skit makers? Mm. Because you mentioned that sometimes it might take money and other times you can start with as little as, as, little as So what would be your advice for them? How do they start? So my advice to people who want to come into skit making, don't be in haste to make the money. Because by the time you are desperate, you are going to be introduced into many uh, uh, group that will consume you. That you may come to limelight and you disappear. So it is good we follow step by step. Don't be in haste, don't be so desperate. Like the women, if they want to come into it, they meet wrong people, they will take advantage of them. You know what I mean. Entertainment, there are people who are there just to, uh, they have an interest. They are not just there to make impact in the society, but all they have to is to just say, come and pose as a director or as a skit maker. I have platform i'm going to give you platform but you have to offer this some women need to offer their body you know so please wait for your time start it i know it's stressful but one day you sit down and laugh because by the time you try you try you go to occasion one day people were happy to see you you know even if you don't have the money you'll be happy because people have recognized what you are doing with them in, in the society. So time will come that those things will start pay, paying. But if you said you are desperate, you have seen Sabino have bought cars or other 
comic uh, actors have bought uh, houses. Mr. Saloma and the rest. Then you now say, okay, me too, I want to be like them. It took them years to get there. So you should wait for your own time. Don't rush. Because if you want to rush, uh, there are saying that said, um, if you want to eat cake, there you're going to know that there's oven. So please, uh, for the new ones who are aspiring to be like those they have seen, they, they, they admire, they have to walk towards getting there. You don't just start to skit on that three months and you get there. No, no, it doesn't work like that. Hmm. Well, thank you so thank much you. for joining us, Gospel Al-Haji. Thank you for joining us. Well, uh, you